All right, today we're in the Victi Tech workshop. While we're in here and the guys are doing a little bit of maintenance to the build, I took the opportunity that we're back in Cape Town where I can get all the Land Rover parts to do our brake discs. Now this has been not long overdue, but something I've just realized recently. What is that? I don't know, it didn't sound good. Something to do with the brakes. We have noticed that on the brake pedal it's been taking a little bit extra and having to push that pedal down a little bit further. The brake pads themselves are pretty new. Did a bit of research first, asked some questions on what the minimum thickness is of the brake disc required. And I saw that on front and rear, we were a couple of millimeters under. Now a couple of millimeters might not sound like much, but when you're talking about your brake discs, it is quite a bit. Some people would have let them run a bit further, but I thought, why not just change them out? A job I've never done before, and I'm actually quite enjoying. I've done three, so I've had a bit of a warm up. I'm gonna go on to the uh, front right-hand side now. Starting off here, I obviously, pretty basic stuff, but I'm gonna talk through all the steps anyway. Break all of the wheel nuts, just soft broken before we jack the car up. And I'll also break this off, the, uh, the hub nut. It's just a protection cap here, 52 millimeters, because once you get it up, you then got to put it in, if you forget to break it and it's a bit tight, then you're putting a lot of stress on your actual uh, half shaft system. Like that. <clears throat> <laughs> Sometimes they're a little bit tight. You guys remember, we've got a good habit of losing these things and having them fall off. We found one on the road recently, you might remember that. I don't even know what the torque setting would be on this, but I have been putting a little bit extra on there because I don't want to keep having to replace them. <laughs> there is a difference in the Land Rover Defender between the front discs and the rear. I've just gone for the stock standard. I did consider getting the sports brakes, like vented and slotted brakes, but I did a bit of research myself. I think they're a lot better as in your braking and that, but from everything I heard, they don't last as long. And we've never had an issue braking. These brake discs that we're replacing right now, um, just to mention, are almost seven years old. They've had a good life and, you know, we carry a heavy load. It's just a routine maintenance job. I got the little box there. Here it's nice, I'm in a workshop. Usually we're on the side of the road, so I always try to have a little box or a plastic container to put all of my parts in, because it's so easy to lose a nut or a bolt in the dirt. I'm removing the drive member bolts. So I'm gonna jack the car up and again, we're in the workshop. So I have a jack stand. I don't carry a jack stand with me. Usually if I can find bricks or wood or something, I will put it back up. But depending on what I'm doing, if I need to work completely under the car for sure, I'll look for something here where quite spoiled. We've got the jack stand, so I'm doing the job safely. Removing the wheel nuts. Now I'm going to remove the brake caliper. Oh, Jesus. They're over torqued and I was thinking I don't do them up that tight but I didn't do that. Two brake caliper bolts and their size 13. There we go. Oh, that was way too tight. I removed the brake caliper, but I do not disconnect the hydraulic brake line because you don't need to. A lot of people do, but then you've got to bleed it again and it's just a pain. As you can see, this is a flexible one, but even the little pipes, that's the hard piping, they're flexible as just pull the, pull the brake caliper off and push it out the way, hang it by a cable tie or a little steel hook, whatever you want to do. But there's, yeah, there's definitely no need to, um, I don't believe anyway, to disconnect the brake line. Why create extra work for yourself? <laughs> 
sometimes I'll tie them off, but with the front, I can, I know a little spot for it. I've had these off enough where it's not gonna fall off and kink the hose or um, the hard piping. I just push it up and push it onto the uh, track rod there, onto the steering arm, sorry. And uh, yeah, it's, it's solid there, famous last words. The back ones though, I do tie them off, either secure them with a cable tie or with a little bit of a rope or whatever. But that's not going anywhere. To remove this drive member, now with these one, with the rear, it's, uh, it is a little bit easier. I just pull the drive member off and the half shaft and everything comes out with that. But obviously you can't do that at the front here, but it's still a pretty simple job. I don't use the, the paper gaskets that come with these things. I'm always carrying just a little bit of gasket maker and this stuff's awesome. It seals anything far more reliable than the, um, the factory paper gaskets, I believe. I have to remove the lock nut. These nuts have an anti-rotation tab. So I've got to knock that one out nice and gently on this. One use only, these ones. Try to make sure that you get that opened up as much as you can because if you don't get it back to a nice circle, then as you back off the uh, lock nut here, maybe not major, but you can damage your stub axle thread. I think I've mentioned this before, but this is a, a later model Land Rover Defender, the newer style bearings. So the bearings are torqued against a spacer tube to 210 Newton meters. That's why it takes a bit to break it out. They're not just the, the little bit of torque, old school ones. Now this lock nut, I will throw in the bin. It's actually in perfect condition. And I'll be honest, I have reused them in the past when I haven't had one on hand. But if you can, like I bought four brand new ones. Bearings are brand new, essentially. They've done a couple of thousand kilometers. I am inspecting them, repacking them and cleaning them if I think they need it, but most of them have come out and the grease still looks clean as, fully packed still, so I'm, I'm not disturbing them and I've managed to do all the work without um, disturbing the rear side of the bearing anyway. I always carry um, a packet of these gloves, surgical gloves. Had a little bit of heat on it, that bearing. Still seems in good condition, but yeah, definitely it's cooked on the inside there, Sam. That one definitely needs repacking and a, and a clean up. And I may, uh, I don't know. It's definitely had some heat, which is um, not concerning, but interesting. There it is. <laughs> Maybe you're not used to these ones. That's why I talk our bearings up because that's the spacer tube or crush tube. Here's a very cool trick that I found on uh, good old YouTube on how to break these out. Sit it in the there and you've got yourself a backup um, tire. Now those, actually these ones caught me out. They are a, a 14 millimeter or probably like a 9 16th or something like that. But luckily here at Victitech Ian had a 14 millimeter, something I may have to add to the kit, although how often you do you break this in the field. Nearly there. Seventy two Newton meters on this one. Jam a bit of grease in there. Repacking a little bit from the top. 
I think it's okay. It looks pretty good. Grease still looks fairly new in there, but doesn't hurt to just throw a little bit in. Brake cleaner. These do come out of the box with a little bit of, uh, I guess it's preservative oil on them or something. Maybe, there we go. Spacer tube back in. I might actually repack this bearing. Bearing goes back in the right way. Make sure of that. Some sort of a washer. I'm not sure, a retaining washer maybe. This is just what the lock nut, hub nut goes up against. Oh, my gloves are finished, I think. It's got a little tab on it that goes on the flat edge of the stub axle. Push that in. Brand new hub nut. These are very fine threads. I can feel that starting to get a bit tight. I know it's on. And then I'll move to this one. Not too much, just a fraction of torque. Give it a bit of a spin back and forth. Let that grease spread around. Loosen it. And then I'll go for torque. 210. Actually, my little meter only goes to 200. But the, the alarm goes off, but I can see it hit 210. Now we're going to bash in the anti-rotation tab. Not too far, that'll do. Brake calipers going back on. <laughs> Not yet. Brand new brake discs needed to push the uh, brake caliper pistons out just a little bit. We're getting close now. Come on. Sixty-five newton meters on these bolts. All right, spacer, and then our circlip. Okay, circlip installed. As you go through the job, the different stages, I mean, this one not too complicated, not too many parts, but it's still very important. Take a glance in your box every now and then as you put stuff together and say, okay, yeah, that one didn't need to go in already, you know, because it's very easy to do. I've done it where you get right to the very end and you look in your box and you're like, oh no, that was meant to go in three steps ago. So yeah, keep an eye on that spare parts box. Hundred and thirty for alloy wheels. Finishing up with the hub nut. <laughs> I just do it to something. <laughs> 